Welcome. Today we're going to talk about line plots and stem and leaf plots. This is the first lesson in our chapter dealing with data analysis and probability. And so we're also going to introduce data analysis and talk about what it means. Data analysis is how you analyze data. Like if you have a lot of data, a lot of information, and you're trying to make sense of it. An easy way for me to sort of explain about this is to take a look at television commercials. This is a uh, word cloud about how toy manufacturers advertise. So this is called how toy ad vocabulary reinforces gender stereotypes. Guess who these toys are geared towards? Now, the size of the word tells you the frequency with which it occurred. So if you were to analyze a bunch of TV commercials and you saw the words love, and magic, fun, those are the words that appear the most frequently. And then still occurring regularly, but less often, are words like perfect and cute. And you, you can see it on down the line. Okay, so who are these ads geared towards? Now I'm gonna to go to the next one. Who are these ads geared towards? So the largest word is battle. So that means that word occurs the most frequently and then power occurs next most frequently. So in a word cloud, you can very clearly see which pieces of information occur the most and which ones occur less often just from the size of the words. And it's a very nice, clear way of presenting the information that also appears pretty artistic. So obviously, this is television ads aimed towards boys. And I'll back up a slide. You can see the previous slide was aimed towards girls. And by just hammering away with these words in commercials from the time kids are really, really young, it actually helps to reinforce those gender stereotypes. All right, so I'm gonna move on to talking about our lesson for today. We're gonna to talk about two things today. The first one is called a line plot. So Cornell style with highlighting the keyword line plot and writing in the margin a question. So the answer to your question is, a line plot uses a number line and X's to show how often a value occurs in a data set. So instead of making something bigger, we put more X's for each time it occurs. A line plot uses a number line and X's to show how often a value occurs in a data set. A line plot can help you see how the data are distributed. So please do copy this frequency table. This is called the frequency table. The numbers on the left are the numbers that we're talking about. These might be the ages of some kids at a camp. And on the right is the frequency, like how many? So there's one 11 year old. How many 15 year olds are there? That's right, there are three. So we're gonna construct a line plot for this data. And I'm gonna draw a number line, basically. And we're gonna put the numbers that are represented uh, underneath the number line. So there's 11, 12, up to 16. And then we're gonna put an X for each frequency. So how many 11 uh, numbers are there? Just one, so we put one X. For 12, there are two, and so on. So this is how you construct a frequency table. We have two 13-year-olds, no 14, three 15, and two 16. And so this would show the, uh, the frequency. And so by looking at this, you can see which one is the tallest, therefore the most, and that would be the 15-year-olds. And you can see the rest are relatively flat with the gap at 14. And it makes the data very obvious and easy to analyze. Okay, to analyze means to make sense of something. So to, to understand. Okay, so next type of data analysis is called a stem and leaf plot. A stem and leaf plot organizes data by showing each item in order. Now I'm using the two different colors to highlight here to distinguish between the stem, which will be in red, and the leaf, which will be in blue, okay? So the leaf, we're gonna define first. 
the leaf is the last digit to the right. It's very simple. No matter what the number is, the last digit is the leaf. And the stem is everything else. So the stem is the remaining digit or digits. It's everything that comes before the leaf. Okay, this is best shown with an example. This is why I color coded. So you can see that in each number, it doesn't matter if there's a decimal or if it, how many digits it has, the last digit is the leaf. And the ones coming before it would be the stem. The stem and leaf plot gets its name from nature. And you can see most plants have a stem with leaves coming off. To construct a stem and leaf plot, here's something I don't need you to copy this all into your notes. Let's go through it, try and understand it, and then we'll try a couple examples. Okay, so to construct a stem and leaf plot, here are the steps. You first arrange your data from the smallest to the largest, or from the least to the greatest. Once it's arranged, then you draw a vertical line, and on the left side of that line, you write the stem. Okay, that's everything except the last digit. And on the right side of the line, you write your leaves in numerical order. Okay, it needs to be in order, again, from smallest to largest. And finally, a key. You need to include a key to indicate what your stems and leaves represent. Okay, so once again, the steps are arrange the data in order, draw a line, Put the stems, then put the leaves, and make sure you have a key. Let's do it. So here's a set of data, and in order to save time, I'll put this data in order for you, and then you'll copy it. Okay, so here's a bunch of random data. Once we put the data in order, it looks like this. But don't forget this important step. Until you put the data in order, it's not possible to construct a good stem and leaf plot. So here's the data in order. Now I want you to copy this. And the next thing we're going to do is write our stems. So the stems are not the last digit. As I look at this, I see numbers that are in the tens, the twenties, and the thirties. And so our stems will be one, two, and three. So let's draw a vertical line and put our stems of one and two and three, which represents tens, twenties, and thirties. Now for the leaves. In the tens, we have 10, 15, 15, and 18, and that would be written uh, like this. So those 0, 5, 5, 8 with a stem of 1 are going to represent 10, 15, and 15, and 18, all the numbers that begin with a 1. So in the 20s, we have 22, 25, and 28. So what leaves will we write after the 2? That's right, we're going to write 2, 5, 8. So that represents 22, 25, 28. And finally, for the 30s, we have 35 and 36, like so. So you only write each stem once, and you write each leaf once, and it compacts the data just like this. And from this, you can tell the minimum value of 10, and the maximum value of 36, because everything's in order. Finally, the key looks like this. You, you write the word key and you show how you would translate one of the numbers. For example, two slash three means 23. Even though 23 is not a number in our data set, that's fine. It just shows how you would read it. So that somebody looking at this stem and leaf plot would understand what it means. Sometimes you get two sets of data like this, and you want to compare the sets of data to analyze and so you make what's known as a double stem and leaf plot. And that's what we're going to do. So before you copy these down, let me put them in order for you again. But remember that you can't make your stem and leaf plot until the numbers have been put into order. So here's set A and here's set B. Please go ahead, hit the space bar, copy down all this data, and then we'll create a double stem and leaf plot. All right, to create the double stem and leaf plot, we're going to need two vertical lines like so. And we're going to put the stems in the middle. We'll put the leaves for set A to the left, and we'll put the leaves for set B to the right, and we'll need two keys. So these are all decimal numbers. The 
smallest seems to start with a six, the largest with a nine. So our leaves will be six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, okay, so we'll put set A on the left, and the leaves are going to grow out towards the left. So our key is going to seem backwards from the previous key. So here, 2 line 7 is going to mean 7.2, because the leaf is growing towards the left. So in set A, we have 6.3, we have 7.3 and 7.4. So the 3 will be closer to the branch. Uh, and the 4 further to the left, so it's sort of reverse order there. 8.2, 8.5 would look like that, and 9.1. Now for set B, we're going to need a key for set B as well. On this one, the numbers are growing out to the right, so 8 line 3 means 8.3, it's sort of the opposite. So we have the numbers 7.6, 7.6, 8.2, 8.3, 9.1, nine point two nine point seven and we've constructed our double stem and leaf plot